series called Bhavartha Deepika. He commented on this word Yadrichaya and he said, Yadrichaya cannot be Atibhagyam. Atibhagyam means somebody is greatly, greatly fortunate. So then Jiva Goswami, he was looking at that definition, right? And Vishwanath Chakravati Thakur also, they, he looked at that definition. They both thought, Atibhagyana, it's true. You cannot deny what Shri Swami said. He's the original commentator on Bhagavatam. But can anybody here simply, let's say, just throw it in the hat? We're just greatly fortunate. That's why we're here. <laughs> Impossible. Because you cannot estimate what kind of mercy makes someone of the caliber of Srila Prabhupada who was at the Raslila Stali, because where Radha Damodar Temple is situated in Braj is a Rasa Stali. Therefore, Srila Prabhupada had Darshan directly Raslila. He directly would talk to Rupa Goswami Pad and his Siddha form of Rupa Manjari regularly. Who at that age could give that up? Not by airplane, not first class, not even by a carnival cruise ship, but to come on a, a, a freighter to come here and have three heart attacks, etc. Et so this kind of mercy, you cannot calculate it. So the word Yadrichaya, to say it simply means good fortune, it won't cut it in <laughs> one sense. Right? Because it doesn't estimate from where we came to what we're even trying to do and to have gotten the mercy of Srila Prabhupada. So Vishwanath Chakravati Thakurapad, he made a statement. He said, Yadvichaya Bhakta Swatantra Jatta Kripa Mangaludhaine. He defined this word. What is Yadvichaya? It is the independent mercy of a Bhakta who comes and by their mercy they freely give you that mercy in the form of Krishna consciousness. <laughs> he just laid it all out. So it's not just Ati Bhagyan and not just good fortune, but who takes on themselves their independent mood. Now Srila Prabhupada was independent because who would consider to leave Vrindavan at that age to come here? Me and my wife have both retired. I never think about going back to work. <laughs> you understand? Not that there's any comparison, but to think about traveling from Vrindavan at that age without, you know, offered luxurious accommodations, everything, not even knowing what would be on the other side, this is Yadvichaya. This is personified Yadvichaya. You understand? So, with that great fortune, we've come to the point where we're trying to also understand what is this life? What is the journey of the soul? What happens? So Sanatana Goswami Pad, who is, of course, one of the six Goswamis and great Acharyas in our line, he asked this question, more or less on behalf of all of us. So he asked the Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Majalil of Chaitanya Charitamrita, Kayami, Kenamai Jare Tapotrai. He asked, Why? First, who am I? Kayami, Kenamai Jare Tapotrai. And why am I suffering? Because I don't know this, I have no way to know what is the most beneficial thing for me. So then Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, in a nutshell, he answered him. Oh, Jivera Sarup Hoye Krishna Nityadas, Jivera Tatasto Sakti Ved Abed Prakash. In a nutshell, he answered, Oh, you're the eternal servant of Krishna. But then, if I'm the eternal servant of Krishna, why am I suffering? <laughs> <laughs> so then Mahaprabhu answered him, he told, Huh? Ah, so now the investigation begins. What is this Jivera Tatasta Shakti? So Jiva Goswami, he is the synthesis of everything that was taught to Rupa Goswami, to Sanatana Goswami, Gopal Bhatta Goswami's instructions on what to do, which are manifest in books like the Satriya Saradipika and other books of practice, right? Hari Bhakti Vilas, etc. He is the personification of synthesizing all of that. Especially, he wrote six books called the Sats and Darbas. Right? Jiva Goswami, how many verses did he write? Anybody know? 400,000, so close. <laughs> right? Just think, Srimad Bhagavatam is 18,000 verses. Bhagavad Gita, 700 verses. Right? And if you read Srimad Bhagavatam, like our daily practices, we do one verse every day, Srimad Bhagavatam, right? 
If you did 18,000 verses, one each day, you'd be 50 years old before you got through Bhagavatam one time. Most of us didn't join when we were babies either, right? So that means for a lot of people, you get through Bhagavatam basically one time in the life. So make the best of it, okay? But Jiva Goswami, he wrote six sandarbhas, and these six sandarbhas, he encapsulated all that was taught by Mahaprabhu, all that came down from Rupa and Sanatana Goswami and the other Goswamis, and all of the philosophical treaties that were there and present in the year at the time. So in one of those sandarbhas, which is called Paramatma Sandarbha, Jiva Goswami goes into detail, what is this Jivera Tatashta Shakti? So first of all, the word Jiva means a Shakti of Bhagavan. We're used to saying, oh, he's a Jiva, he's a Jiva. But Jiva really means the Shakti of Bhagavan. The person is called the Atma. So the actual word is Jeev Atma. Mm. He's an Atma. Each individual is an Atma. And what kind of Atma are they? They are Jiva. They are the Shakti of Bhagavan called Jiva Shakti. Understand? So then he said, well, what is the nature of this Jiva Shakti? Right? So he said, well, Na Devo, Na Naro, Na Tiriya. Right? Na Stavaro. He is not the demigod. He is not the ordinary human being. Tiriyak means animals. Also, Stavro means like the trees and rocks and everything. He's not any of those things. Then he said, Oh, na gyan matrarika. He's also not the combination of senses and just knowledge put together. Because there's some schools of thought in India that say that everybody's just a lump of consciousness and when it comes in contact with the senses, it becomes a person. Hmm. Right? So he said, No, not that either. Na deha indriya. Not the body, not all the senses of the body. Na dihi na mana. Not the mind, not the intelligence. Jiva, we got it. Right? We're not any of these things. Who are we? So then he starts. Swashmai swayam prakash. That every jiva is a self-illuminating entity. So now he's talking about the jiva before he's conditioned, but also not being imbued with spiritual energy. Right? Because it's not that every jiva, if he just removed the ignorance, we'd already be Krishna conscious. Swarup Shakti, or the internal energy of God, has to come into the heart of the jiva for him to realize his nature as being a servant of Krishna. So Jiva Goswami is talking now in an ontological, means like just a study of the Atma, right? So he says, now this Atma, he's Swayam Prakash, he's self-illuminating. Swashma means he also can know himself. He then says, he is Nitya Anur. He's eternal, but Anur means he's so small, so tiny. Because he is so tiny, he's subject to be influenced by ignorance. Then he also says, hmm? Navikari, right? Navikari means the jiva doesn't undergo transformation. So if the actual atma, the actual person whom we are, does not undergo a transformation, who's become this material body? You understand the point? If you don't undergo transformation as the atma, Who's become this material body? So Jiva Goswami, his, his analysis is excellent. So then he says that Paramatma Vaibhava Gonane Chatatastu Shakti Swarupanam Chirekarasanam. He says, therefore, the Jiva, although he is spiritual by nature, what happens to him? Anadi Paratatva Gyanam Samsaga Bhava Maya. From time without beginning, Al Srila Prabhupada was very fond of using the word time immemorial, right? Because if we say anadi, which literally in Sanskrit means without any beginning, people will become hopeless. <laughs> oh man, this, you mean I've been here from time without beginning, just suffering, right? So, but in Srimad Bhagavatam, 11th canto, 2210, the verse is there. Anadi avidya yuktasya. Purusham Atma Vedanam. It says in Bhagavatam clearly, Anadi Avidya Yuktasha. The Jiva's connection with ignorance is Anadi, without any beginning. Right? So I'll get to that, I'll explain everything. So Jiva Goswami says here, Paratattva Jnana Samsaga Bhava Maya. So above means from time without any beginning, Paratattva, his knowledge about God and his knowledge about his own nature, have been void or absent. Because of that, he is Chit Ekarasanam. Chit Ekarasanam means he's neutrally disposed towards God. 
This is the very meaning of the word tata shta. Tata means like a borderline. Bhaktivinoda Thakur says it's a border between ocean and land. It's imperceptible, but at some point the sand begins and at some point the ocean begins. That imperceptible line of demarcation is called a tata. Sta means to be situated there. So tata shta means the jivas are situated in a neutral position in relation to Bhagavan. So what are they situated in between? The spiritual energy and the material energy. Because they are so minute in size, Jiva Goswami says, therefore, Maya Sarup Avritya Ganam. Maya takes and covers their own nature and offers them a nature through the three modes of material nature. Sattva Rajas Tamo Jadane Pradane. Then Maya takes and offers an identity. The nature of this offering is called avidya. The word vidya means knowledge. Avidya means without knowledge. So when the jivas are offered this avidya, four things happen. The first thing that happens because of avidya is called asmita. Asmi means I am somebody. Who I'm not sure, but I am somebody. You understand? It's called asmita. So then from asmita, Ahamkara comes, right? Ahamkara literally means aham. Kara means I am the karana, the cause, and karata, the doer of everything that I see before me. Mm. You understand? So now we have to begin with a premise. Asmi is not you. This is an identity that's offered by Maya and the three modes of material nature. It is not you. And because the jiva is navikari, he doesn't transform. How does this connection take place? Well, every jiva, every atma has a subtle body composed of mind, intelligence, and we always say false ego. But the real meaning here of false ego is what I just described, asmita. And before even asmita comes, there is what is called the chitta. Mahaprabhu says, chaito darpana majanam or shravanari suda chitta kariya yodoi. So the chitta is like a huge flat screen TV, right, of consciousness that's in between the atma and the material world. So what the three modes of material nature and maya are doing is because of vidya, they first show on that big screen of consciousness, asmi, you are somebody, but not who you really are. And then we buy it. So, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, who can I be? Ahamkara. Oh, well, I'll be the cause and the doer of whoever it is that you decide I am. So then Maya offers upadi. Upadi means different designations. How do you get the designation? Karmana, divana, natrena, janto, deho, papatye. Third canto Bhagavatam says, according to your karma and your activities, different upadis or designations are offered. Therefore, every one of us is sitting here as different personalities. Somebody, somebody's wife, somebody's husband. I'm from India, I'm from Africa, I'm from America, I'm this, I'm that. I was a policeman, he was a lawyer, she was a dentist. You understand? These are all upadis offered by material energy. We, vicariously, looking at that chitta, that flat screen TV of the chitta, identify with those characters, birth after birth, and say, that's me. Now, the thing is, oh, well, that's simple in Makunda. Simple problem. You told us what it is. Jiva Goswami wrote it, so it's verified. So from tomorrow, I'll wake up and I'll say, I don't want any upadis anymore. <laughs> right? But not that easy. Because also, three other elements are there. Rag, Dwesh, and Abhinavesh. So Rag means attachment. What attachment? Because in our nature, there is some ananda. So we become attached. I have to experience happiness. And if I am not experiencing happiness in my real identity... I'll try to find it in the false one. You understand? I'll try to find it in the false one. When you try to find it in the false one, rag arises. Attachment to looking, where will I find happiness? How will I find happiness? Uh, maybe a new car, maybe a new job, maybe more money. Maybe get married, no, maybe get divorced, no, maybe do this. <laughs> you understand? So you go through so many things in order to try to find happiness. Dwesh means avoiding misery. Now, in the nature of Ananda, Jiva Goswami says, the very nature of the Jiva is Dukkha Pratyogitva. Dukkha Pratyogitva means that in the Jiva himself, in the Atma itself, there is no misery. So where did misery come from? 
You understand? In the Atma, there is no misery. He clearly says that. Where did it come from? It's coming from the vicarious identification with the modes of nature which are being shown on your flat screen TV of the Chitta. Now we have experience of this because anybody who's seen a movie, gone to a drama play or anything like that, when you look at the TV or you look at the drama, you get a character and you give emotional investment to the plot, to the character, and therefore you go through the emotional waves according to the narrative. When the bad guy is in trouble, everybody says, oh man, I hope he gets out of this, right? And you're into it. Or when there's the horror movie and you've already seen three people go into that place and get their head cut off, right? And then you see the last innocent person that walking towards that same door, right? You're in this, don't go in there. I told, hey, hey, stay out of there, right? Now we know it's a movie, right? We know it's a movie. And Hollywood has no comparison to Maya Shakti. You understand? But even then you say, hey, 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 don't go in there, right? And then you close your eyes, right? You go, right? So in the same way, Maya also fully engages us in the drama played out on the chitta. How does she do it? By a power called Abhinivesh. Abhinivesh means she has the power to make you completely absorbed in the drama of the three modes of material nature played out on the screen. Now when you question, is that really me or not? Krishna answered the question. Prakriti kriyamonani gunai karmani savasha ahankara vimuratma karta mitimanyate. No! You are actually not the doer of any of these things going on in the material world. They're all being carried out by who? The three modes of material nature. So as a result, when dukkha or suffering comes, where's the suffering coming from? Is it coming from the Atma? No, because there's no suffering in the Atma. What is it coming from? Looking at the drama and identifying with it. <laughs> and Abhinavesh means that the drama, is re you're really absorbed. You cannot break that concentration. Yes, I am this body. I am having a bad relationship. Yes, I did get fired yesterday. Yes, my bank balance is low. <laughs> you understand? Because it, it's real. The perception is real. And in the in the eleventh canto, the verse I quoted earlier, on Nadi Avijja Yukta Sha Purusham Vedatmana Vedatmana Swato Na Sambhavanti Anya. It says here, Swato Na means by yourself you cannot get out of it. You understand? Swato Na Sambhavanti. By your own effort, you can't change it because we're not more powerful than Maya. Krishna said in Bhagavad Gita, only by surrendering to me you can cross beyond it. So Maya has that power invested by God. You cannot break it off by yourself. So you cannot yoga your way out of it. You cannot get counseling your way out of it. You, can, you can't purchase it. Right? I just got the new gold platinum visa card. Maya, can we talk? You understand? There's no way out of this except one thing. Brahmanda Brahmati Konya Bhagavan Jeev Guru Krishna Prasade Bhai Bhakti Latavij. Only by that good fortune I mentioned, wandering throughout all the universes with your karma, you happen to meet Guru or Sadhu. They are the prasad of Krishna in this world. Guru and Sadhu are Krishna's prasad in this world. That's why the verse says, Guru Krishna prasad. Because Sadhu and Guru are Krishna's prasad in this world. When you meet a Sadhu, an amazing thing happens. Even though Abhinavesh is so powerful, Sarva Songamena Ratnya Ankur Rupa Eva Makti Jayati. What happens? The sadhu comes, and when you hear Harikata of the sadhu, you hear the kirtan of that sadhu, then Mati comes. What is Mati? Mati means literally in Sanskrit discrimination or inclination, but what it does is it breaks your concentration, the sound vibration of sadhus breaks your concentration on the Chitta TV screen drama. <laughs> now, I have a granddaughter, five years old. At five years old, we're in iPad world at this point, right? <laughs> so she gets the iPad, she's on the iPad. Haribo, Naya? No answer. Haribo, Naya? No answer. I have to go to the room, right, in the room. Naya? Haribo, Naya? Yes, Baba. You understand? 
Same way, sadhus for so long have been giving harikata, been giving so much good instruction. But what happened? Abhi Nevesh on the drama on the TV screen. <laughs> Who am I going to be this time? Oh, I got a great body this time. I miss the universe, wealthy, this, 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 and that. Of course, that's not going to last, but at least for now in the drama, it's all good. <laughs> so when the sadhu gives harikata, then you cannot hear the dwani, means the, or the nada, the sound vibration coming from the sadhu. So the thickness of your attachment remains. But as soon as you give a little bit of oral reception, if you give a little bit of oral reception, then mati comes, once mati comes, that abhinavesh to the chitta and the TV screen is broken and you go like this. The first question that arises when you go like this is, Ke Ami, what Sanatin Goswami asked Mahaprabhu? Because now I know I'm not this thing. Ke Ami, Ke Muni, Amare, Jaya, Tapatrai. Why was I suffering? Right? Now here comes a little bit of a problem though. Because when we first, in our immature stage, get this question arise, who do you want to blame for the suffering? Everybody else but you. Everybody else but you. But a lot of times also people say, well, why, why'd you make me come here? Right? <laughs> why'd you make me come here? If you knew this whole place was suffering, you're speaking in Bhagavad Gita, ah, Brahmana, Bhuvanala, all these things. You knew that was happening. Why'd you make me come here? You understand? So sometimes they also want to blame Krishna. This was your fault. Right? But this is because there's some immaturity. Right? It's explained even in Chaitanya Charitamrita that Krishna has many, many types of leelas. One leela is called Shristi Leela. What is Shristi Leela? It is this creation. Why does this Shristi Leela exist? Because Bhagavan also performs pastimes here. There are unique pastimes in this world that don't exist in Vaikuntha, Goloka, Ayodhya, or Brajadam. Wow. What kind of pastimes? Who will Bhagavan save in, in Goloka Vrindavan? Who fell into Maya? Subal, you in Maya today? I'd like to preach to somebody. Ah, no, can I? I'm fine. You understand? <laughs> who will he preach to? Who's, who's in Vaikuntha? Who's in Maya? Nobody's in, who will you preach to? Therefore, in Shristi Lila, Bhagavan can come, perform so many pastimes. Tenth Kanto Bhagavatam, clearly mentioned. What's this verse? Mm. Anugrahaya bhakta na manushinam deinam astita. Bhajate tadrasikrit va yatsrit va tatpuro bhavet. In Sanskrit, bhavet is an imperative. In Sanskrit, there's all kinds of cases and different things. So an imperative means you must do this. So Krishna is telling there, listen, when I come to the material world, I really come for association with my devotees. I'm giving one example. Jai and Vijay. Did I ever speak this kata? Nishringa kata? Ah. No. I don't want to go too long because we'll end up being late. But Jai and Vijay, they are the favorite gatekeepers of Lord Narayan. Lord Narayan has gatekeepers on all eight gates surrounding Vaikuntha. On the western gate, Jiva Goswami mentions Jai and Vijay are his favorites. So, once Jai and Vijay were having a conversation back and forth, Ah Prabhu, Narayan has enlisted us to guard the gates of Vaikuntha. Who's going to break in here? This is the ultimate in gated communities. Right? <laughs> Nobody's ever going to come here. So we'll never really get a, a chance, really ultimately, to demonstrate all the prowess that we're empowered with to protect this place. By the way, if we're so powerful, how powerful must Narayan be? I don't know, but I never saw him fight. He's never fought anyone? No, it's Vaikuntha. Who's fighting here? Right? Wow, it would be amazing to see the prowess of Lord Narayan. Immediately... Because the heart of the devotee in Bhagavana Taratmik means one heart. Krishna could immediately understand, Lord Narayan, excuse me, could immediately understand how my devotees want to see my fighting prowess. Krishna Sandhava Jiva Goswami mentions, Jai Vijay Sonakari Shabhya Jema Vira Rasa Swabhakti Vinodaya That in order to taste Vira Rasa, the mood of fighting, on the pretense of a curse, the four Kumaras came and cursed Jai and Vijay to come to this world so that Bhagavan could enjoy his fighting spirit. So you could give the argument, wait a minute, wait a minute. He's going to fight with Charan and Mustika, right? He couldn't wait till then? <laughs> but there's a difference. Swabhakti Vinodaya. Krishna only can exchange rasa because this is Vira rasa. He can only exchange rasa with devotees. Our Mustika and Charana 
Are they devotees or not? Not devotees. They're servants of Kangsa. You understand? So Krishna, though he's at Maramata, he will not get any Viraras, the pleasure of fighting, from fighting with Charan Mustika. Mm. But with Jai and Vijay, who are his devotees, they come to this world. Some Ritya, uh, some Rama, some Britya, some, some Rama, some Britya, Samari Anubhadi Yoga, in the third canto of Bhagavatam. When they were cursed, Krishna, I erased this whole thing. Both of you will go to the material world for three births. You will be absorbed in Samadhi, some Rama, some Britya in anger. So the anger of Hiranyakasipu and Hiranyaksha was Bhakti. It was not mundane. So it, it depends on your Adhikar how you understand Sastra. Sastra has so many different levels. So our Acharyas are telling. Actually, for Jai and Vijay, Krishna is directly telling their performances of so-called being averse to him was actually bhakti. Mm. 